Hello and welcome to a new collection update. It hasn't been too long since the last one, but I have rearranged pretty much everything. Well, no, not everything, that's a lie. But I've rearranged uh, a decent amount of stuff and I just thought I'd show off the current setup a little bit. So uh, previously, uh, this was a mostly Safari shelf with just some other miscellaneous stuff uh, sort of thrown in. And now it is just a completely miscellaneous sort of favorite figure shelf, just a big main shelf for all the best stuff. And I've thrown all the uh, the other Safari figures that aren't up there uh, down on this bottom level. Um, so I guess we'll just start down here. Uh, this is obviously a bit of a smaller display for Safari than I usually have out. Um, but I really like it. It's just this really pared down kind of grouping of just the absolute best stuff from Safari. We have some new things. We have the new Baryonyx and Displetosaurus, and we also have the Coelacanth that is uh, not a new figure, but it's new to me. And uh, not really anything else too interesting here. Just again, a really nice collection of Safari stuff. Uh, Papo here, I... Okay, that's, that's supposed to go up here. <laughs> I, I filmed this earlier and I forgot to move the Stegosaurus back. I actually learned something about that Stegosaurus. Uh, last time I talked about it in a video, I mentioned that I wasn't sure exactly how old it was, but I did some research and I think it's a Generation 4 original Carnegie sculpt Stegosaurus, so that's kind of cool. Anyhow, back to Papo. I don't think... I've changed up anything here. All I've done is removed the Styracosaurus because I'm not a huge fan of it. I think I did rearrange some things. Got the gorgeous Caprosuchus and other stuff no one cares about. Um, Carnegie, besides sneaking in the little Steg, I think is exactly the same as it was. Uh, Collecte, we have a couple new additions. We have the awesome Belemnite, totally underrated figure there, and the fantastic Edaphosaurus. And I think I've removed a few figures. Again, just kind of tried to pare it down to uh, just the absolute best stuff that really deserves to be out on display. It's got the Mabusaurus at the back, a little Fukisaurus, the Basilosaurus, a little Fuki Raptor surrounded by other various small figures, the Thalassomedon, the amazing Carnotaurus back there. And then we got the main shelf, which again, just kind of a, a, a miscellaneous S tier figure shelf. I need to I need to change my exposure. There we go, that's better. Uh, so anyhow, we got PNSO stuff, we got old Essien, the little Uranosaurus. Uh, a new addition is the uh, Tuajangosaurus, which, or Tuajangosaurus, however you're supposed to pronounce it, I'm not really sure. Uh, fantastic figure, though. We have the gorgeous, incredible Eofauna Triceratops, which I plan on reviewing soon. I have not been this excited to talk about a new figure probably since the last Eofauna figure. And we do have, of course, all the other Eofauna stuff here, including the Atlasaurus up at the front. We have a few Safari things. I included the Giga and the Chrono just because they're two of my favorites. And I included the Camarasaurus and the Prestosuchus because, you know, I got them as super early production samples and just kind of have some some awesome memories tied to those uh, tied to those specific figures. Um, and then we also have the <laughs> all the BOTM stuff in my collection. Which, uh, if you haven't been following my Instagram, you might not even know I have all these Ceratopsids, but I do! We have the awesome, uh, what, what term am I trying to, what, Kickstarter exclusive Monoclonius, there we go, my brain broke for a second. Awesome, super saturated colors there. We have the even more vibrantly colorful Chasmosaurus, the subadult Triceratops, and my personal favorite of the four, the Styracosaurus. I've also already pre-ordered from Wave 2 the Cosmoceratops and the Pachyrhinosaurus. I love these Ceratopsids. I think once I get my Wave 2 figures uh, from the line, I will make a video just about the series as a whole and about why they're so so good. So <laughs> anyhow, we also have some various little uh, little smaller minis and things from PNSO and such sort of strewn about uh, the bookshelf area. We have the little uh, 2021 Safari Spinosaurus by some pop boxes. We have uh, a Nendroid figure of Ray from Evangelion surrounded by more PNSO minis, more miscellaneous stuff down there. We have the Collecte Dimorphodon just sitting on the fan in the middle of the room because it fits. Uh, meme area. We have the uh, the Kaiwa Jara, which I think might be a new addition since the last update video on the collection. Uh, this is actually Eric's uh, Kaiwa Jara, which he gave to me because he didn't want it anymore, and it, it's just kind of chilling with Pen Pen there in the corner. And then uh, the final little thing is over here above the window frame. I threw the Bigfoot up here because I just really love that figure, and I love how emblematic it is of 
the cryptid and of the Pacific Northwest, so I thought it'd be fun to put it up on display there. And then I decided to throw this little favorite Deinonychus up there, just kind of put something on the other side. I also threw up this little custom-painted Takanuva mask, which used to be my profile picture on Watching Relic, so just kind of a, a very random, fun little mix of things. Um, and anyhow, that's about it. Yeah, as you can see, I've, I've definitely uh, put a lot of emphasis on just trying to thin the herd, trying to put less things on display and really get it down to just the best stuff that really deserves to be out. And I really, really like it. I like how much more space I have, how much more open this top shelf looks. And uh, I think I could probably even go further with it. I'm just loving how the current setup looks. So anyhow, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.